Shalom, 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 Yashara. It is King Brittany Chanel. A king is a descendant and a ruler of a divine race. So shalom to the 12 tribes of Yashara that are not lost but scattered worldwide. Hey to y'all. Hey to the Gentiles that are following after Yah's righteousness. Let's get into the video. <music> So today's video is going to be on choosing modesty. Like what can, what can you expect? How, you know, what kind of feelings do you face when you are choosing modesty? Um, of course, we discussed in videos prior that modesty is fleeing vanity. Um, it is fleeing worldliness, fleeing vanity, okay? We're going to go over all of these things in this video and like we're going to talk about how the enemy also uh, tries to use your thoughts to kind of hold you captive in the bondage that is vanity. So we're going to go over all of that and how choosing modesty is going in the direction of choosing Abaya and what his will is for your life. Okay, I'm going to get into, you know, all of these things in this video. So if you like this sort of content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, Mocha Modesty. And, you know, let's let's get started on this topic. Okay, so the basic overstanding of modesty, right? Anything that you read in the Torah, overstand. This is the first thing I want y'all to overstand overstand that when you look stuff up go back to the hebrew right because torah was originally written in hebrew for the yasharalites okay it's not enough to just say that you're hebrew specifically torah was given to the lineage of shem so shem you know it's abraham isaac and yakov right that's how the 12 tribes was started specifically shem shem is the afro-asiatic people okay northeast african west asian we now that we got that out of the way so specifically because just because you say oh i'm a hebrew that does not necessarily mean that you are a hebrew israelites because there's hebrew edomites there are hebrew japhites all of these people because noah had ham shem and Japheth okay those are the three so the progenitors those are the three progenitors and then they had children okay Shem specifically is the line for the Yasharelites okay now that we gotten that out the way so Torah specifically was given to the Yasharelites right you know the story of grandfather Yacob hopefully y'all are reading um the Torah and Torah means the instructions of Yah. So they were given, the covenant people were given specific instructions on how to live. This is what I'm basing, um, what I'm about to talk about today on, okay? The specific instructions that were given. We were called to be holy. Holy is just meaning set apart, right? But what I want to tell y'all when you read Torah, I want y'all to read Torah, which is the instructions of Yah, with the Hebraic Yasharelite mindset. Overstand that due to our disobedience and the sin of our forefathers, there were curses and things that happened, meaning that our scrolls were stolen, right? And then remixed. And they came up with, Rome came up with Christianity and the rest of that stuff. And it was like when we were in Spain and Portugal, when, you know, we were where we were, Inquisition happened and we were sent to West Africa. Like some of us even lived in Morocco, North Africa, all of that stuff. We were sent to West Africa. And that's why you see a lot of us who are Yasharalites today, um, Overstand that we ran into Africa fleeing persecution. So some of our forefathers also before the law was before the law, Abba Yah put down in the law, you know, only he wanted us to only take, you know, you only get a husband or a wife from the tribe of your fathers, which means like of your tribe. So if it's 12 tribes, 
of your tribe, right? Of your father's seed, right? So, you know, because the inheritance is broken up, you know, between the 12 tribes a certain way, an inheritance is very important, okay? Like, if you ever want to know about a curse, go and try to steal somebody's inheritance and see what happens to you, right? So, me explaining all of this, this is, this is getting into why you have to live a certain way if you are a Yasharelite. And it has nothing to do with religion, right? The reason why I said all of this to get into how this has to do with modesty is that I've seen a lot of content about modesty and it comes from the religious churchianity perspective, right? When you read Torah, understand that certain things of the Shamaim, which is heaven, is hidden to certain people. Because you could read the Bible and you could think that, oh, this verse means this, that it is indefinitely this. But you have to understand that certain certain scriptures in Torah are multifaceted and multi-layered, right? I'll give you, I'll give you an, um, uh, I'll give you a, a, a freebie. Yah so loved the world that he gave his own begotten son. World, if you go look it up in Hebrew, is going to translate to something totally different than what you think. You think, okay, this means the whole world, right? It's talking about when you have children, you think about your children are your world, your the apple of your eye, right? That's that type of concept between a father and his children. Like you, your children, that's what you, you notice their parents, right? That's all they talk about, right? Is their kids because they're proud of their kids. They love their kids. They would do anything to protect their kids from harm and danger. You know, at least we would hope. So there's an example of that, right? Today, we're going to talk about things of modesty because there's, a lot of verses in the Torah about modesty and a lot of people give them from a religious perspective. I'm coming to y'all from the Hebraic Yasharelite perspective, okay? What can what can you expect choosing modesty? Um what what you know, what are people going to even say? What, you know, I'm giving y'all all of the background from real life experience, right? Also, a thing I want to say before I get started, right? I'm not coming from the typical churchianity perspective, right? No disrespect to what anybody and what they choose to believe in. That If that's where you are, that's where you are. I'm coming from a, a perspective of somebody who has been delivered from that. I've left the church. I have left that. And I realize who I actually am as a as a as a Yasharalite, okay? This is not a religion, this is a culture. And, you know, I've even taken the liberty to research the historical background, you know, about all of that stuff that I kind of told y'all in the beginning. All of that stuff has um you can historically look up, it happened, it's a real situation, okay? So all the stuff I told y'all about the transatlantic and all of that stuff, it happened. Um, you know, getting expelled from Spain and Portugal, going to West Africa, running into Africa. You can even back this up with the Torah where it says, you know, they mistook a, mistook a lot of us for Hamites. Right? Remember Moshe? They thought he was an Egyptian. Okay? So that goes to show you that we do look a lot like our cousins. Um, and then, like I said, some of our forefathers did marry into, um, to marry some, you know, Egyptians and things like that right but they're a totally different group of people this is why I don't go by be lack because that's not a, a, a it's not a race it's a status and we need to start embracing our culture and getting back so let's get into since we're nine minutes then let's get into what can you expect from choosing modesty because modesty has to do with like I said fleeing vanity so as a Yasharelite we know that we are not to bow down to any other gods. We are to we were commanded that we are only to worship Elohim. We have a covenant relationship, a marriage with Elohim forever. There are huge repercussions from getting into worshiping other gods, right? So part of vanity is, you know, things you might be like, what what is worshiping other gods? You know, King Brittany, what is worshiping other gods? 
we are in a culture especially if you live in babylon like western civilization like i don't care if you're in the uk i don't care if you're in the united states anywhere where babylon has touched can be considered with the influence of babylon could be considered that right so this culture that we live in even when it comes to vanity like think about things like instagram where you know women are constantly um you know competing against one another um in a haughty kind of spirit or people are very competitive right even the men right um you know it's oh let me show off and show what i have and make a circus out of it right show off what i got and you know it's it's all about just things that are very vain frivolous they have no substance right things that are of substance are not pushed even when you look at um being on social media things that can feed your soul speak feed your spirit those things are not pushed right so what happens is it's a constant worship of the i call it the selfie culture the, the worship of self right it's no problem with you taking pictures of your family or capturing you know nice moments i want to i want to put that out there or if you feel like you look nice you might want to take a picture of your family or yourself in that moment there's nothing wrong with that right but when culture is centered around that you need to look like they you have to have this expensive i'm just saying the the weave because that's the most popular you have to have this expensive weave to be valued as a person you have to drive this expensive car to be seen as valuable as a person if you don't have this and this is these are thoughts that people have in there that people have right it causes damage to yourself spiritually and that is how you get into vanity. It's like what, you know, our grandfather, King Solomon, if some of us, our grandfather is King Solomon. It's crazy, right? When you think about it, it's not crazy in the sense of crazy, but it's like, wow, like the richest man in the world, the wisest man in the world, right? And he talks about these things, how vanity is a very fleeting kind of thing, like having everything. That's why it always tells you like, what good is it to have the world and lose your soul in the process right that is the whole if you think about it fleeing vanity even when king Jehoshua, our king told the rich man give up everything that you have and follow me right that rich man in that moment he was so into worldliness that he didn't even realize what the king king Jehoshua, was offering him at that point in time right because with king yohoshua like if you've seen him you've seen the father you have everything right like king solomon asking for wisdom because he had the wisdom to know wisdom is 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 being learned having experience knowledge right information gaining that right you get true wisdom the gift from wisdom from the most high yah having that information knowing that this current state in of everything is temporary when you look at even your your vessel this is this is temporary right because you have a, another state of being that you're going to be in when king yohoshua comes back you know judgment happens and you're going to get your you know your your real body right but we're commanded even in our temporary state to take care of the one abaya has blessed us with right knowing that we're here not just to be frivolously living and doing things for you know profitless vanity and frivolousness right we're not supposed to be doing that we're here to complete the mission that we were given we're here to go through trials to prove ourselves so when you look at life like things are deeper than just you bigger than just you you realize that vanity is just really not worth it at the end of the day like who am i doing this for is this pleasing to my creator who has created me whose breath is in my body right alarm clocks are not waking us up abaya is choosing to wake us up every day so just knowing that your father values you enough and is has given what he has given for you to just be in existence and to save and redeem you you look at life very differently and that is what choosing modesty means 
is choosing to live a life that is pleasing to Yah, but also knowing that just because you were given the status of royalty from being a part of that royal covenant doesn't mean give you the right to just be a arrogant prick that walks around you know treating people any kind of way just walks around in in a lower state like if y'all let me tell you it says and he hath made us priests and kings that responsibility is a great responsibility because israel we were called for so much more but if you see the state of our people today is so low because they didn't stay true to the covenant the agreement y'all always remain true he is true but we failed because we got into the vanity the competing one is envying our oppressors competing with one another like it's just things that don't profit your soul things that like look at what people will do for money like they'll they'll get rid of their own um bros and sisters for a dollar like you see it like even trivial stuff like people when um you know jordans would drop they would um take each other out just for a pair of shoes they don't even cost that much to make so it's like that is vanity like a lot of uh men when they preach these doctrines on modesty they solely focus on the women with modesty is a whole entire lifestyle that we were commanded to live because our king our king washed somebody's feet like that is the most humblest thing that you can do like knowing that he's the king he has authority in heaven authority on earth but walking around amongst the people and being so loving and kind to us and showing us the way showing us on how to get to that higher state he is the high priest so high priests typically have priests that work for them he is the king of kings that responsibility a king is a descendant and a ruler of a divine race a divine people so when you know that you have such great responsibility the trivialness of stupid stuff people concern themselves with in life is considered vanity right like and it's really just getting caught up in worldliness getting caught up in serving other gods getting caught up in stuff that is not of Torah so let me tell you what to expect when you turn to a modest life right when I was going through my transformation realize that like i told you spiritual things unless a person is spiritually aware or awake and they have discernment everyday people are are not always going to understand what you're going through okay this is why you have to have a relationship with y'all because a lot of the stuff that you're going to go through you may not even like people are going to be looking at you like nine times out of ten like you're bugging okay that is what you can the number one thing that you can expect now unless people already live that lifestyle or they are already aware and awake to the process but even some people that profess to be in truth have a religious mindset like i told you like the torah when you meditate it when you meditate on it night and day abaya reveals to different people in part so nobody has a hundred percent all of the answers right christianity um i've noticed that when i was in christianity which i thank abaya for allowing us most of us who are if you are so-called black american or negro we had a lot of roots in church background a lot of us abaya um had our parents our four parents four fathers four parents um involved in the church because i believe abaya used the church to help deliver a lot of our people because it's like notice during you know slavery we were not really allowed to read the bible and then when they did give us the bible it was a remixed version of the bible because i believe that they were afraid that that was going to awake like wait a second these stories are sounding very familiar right it was going to awake awaken 
our inner DNA that has a connection to Abaya. But that's a whole different story. But getting back to it, like when you start to read scriptures because certain things are hidden like abba Yah will hide things like even it's so it's so brilliant like we can't even begin to understand the brilliantness of abba Yah. but they can open up the book as much as they want to but they will not be able to decipher what some of this stuff is because abba Yah, like i said he reveals bits and parts to people and he will reveal to who he wants to reveal to so don't be one of those Israelite people that you think, oh, because you studied for 10 years that you got the drop on stuff because Abba Yah could choose to reveal something to somebody else in an instant while you've been studying all that time. It's just, again, do not think more highly of yourself than you ought to. That's vanity. Again, always be humble. Always meditate on, the, on Torah overstand that okay you could have read something your whole life and then i'll give you an example there's a bunch of i, I see it all the time women that do the modest videos and they're overstanding of do not put on things that pertain to a man their overstanding of that is don't wear pants we're going to do a video on pants and i'm gonna give a full breakdown about that but they don't have the overstanding yet that don't put on what pertains to a man is multifaceted because that means do not take on the role also of a man do not take on the the position of a man like you know if you look at what men are supposed to do protect provide all of that stuff right because we know what happens when the order is out of whack this is why the state of our Yashara like community is so low because the men are not in the proper headship uh, role that they're supposed to be in. And then you have women on the front lines. You can you can see this when they're out, excuse me, marching and the rest of this stuff, excuse me, and they're out on the front lines. Are women supposed to be doing that or are men supposed to be the ones protecting the community? Now, it's not to say that Abba Yah won't have special missions for women to help the their their people because we know with Judith, we know uh Deborah, we know with certain women there are missions that Abba Yah will have them on. Whatever Abba Yah instructs you to do is a commandment for you. Okay? So don't look at it from a religious perspective. Don't look at it from a Christianity um religious perspective where you think, okay, this is definite, definite, definite because Abba Yah over time you might think in your mind that this means this and he could give you the total spiritual meaning of it as well to build upon your knowledge that you already have right but you will have some people that they will add try to add to the word or they won't ever go back to see what the hebrew definition and stuff of these words because words have etymology like you can't just read something and think okay this means this because we know English is a tricky language. So when you learn stuff like when you come into modesty, which is a whole lifestyle, you'll begin to have that understanding of, okay, Abaya, give me direction. Also, do not compare your journey. I say this all the time. Do not compare your journey to someone else's journey, right? Abaya in a season might call you to remove weave, right? He might call another sister in another in another journey. I need you to remove this. There's certain things that Abaya will ask you to be obedient to, because obedience is better than sacrifice. He might ask somebody else to do something in the time that they're supposed to do it in, right? So do not get on these videos and you're looking at these ladies like when you're first coming to modesty, like listen to their testimonies, but you have to listen to what Abba Yah in that time is telling you because spiritually people are ready for different things at different times. This is why when I had um, videos before, like I told somebody in my comment section, do not look at me like I am your God, like things that i am saying this is my modesty journey that i'm giving you 
my testimony and insight and different things that I've, I've learned and wisdom that I've acquired over time. And there were different trials and things that I had to go through to get to the point that I am today. And also don't use vessels that are telling you their testimony to gauge, like I said, where you should be. Don't also use them to justify your sin either, right? So sometimes a lady, like you might watch a video and I had the truth behind wigs and weave and maybe I was supposed to be that seed to tell you, hey, stop. You know, I got to already put it in your mind. Hey, I, I need you to stop doing this. But like I said, in churchianity, we are so used to pastors and people being a joke that we don't take um, authority authority seriously when some of the vessels of Yah are telling you to do certain things. Because like I said, churchianity has become the biggest joke in the world because you have people that are self-ordaining themselves as pastors or you're having like the, the people ordaining them to be pastors and then you catch them doing all this sort of stuff. And so what do people do? They blame or they try to write off um, Abaya all together when Abaya is perfect people are not his word is always going to remain true even if there are people uh, pretending to be uh, prophets and the rest of that stuff you are still to remain loyal to the king that's a fact so you could try to use people and you know their flaws to justify why you want to sin and the ending of that is being up out of here so just keep that in mind. You can't use that on the day of judgment. Um, and when you live a modest life, you have the understanding of people are not always going to be uh, cheering you on to doing it because it might be a foreign topic to them. It might be something that is like, this is weird to them. You know what I'm saying? But we are of a, a peculiar people. So... If they're calling you weird, if they are, you know, looking at you <laughs> in your transformation like they're not used to it because they're still in the world. I'm trying to think about the words that I want to say and I'm using them very carefully here. Um, when I first went through my transformation and I removed the wigs, the weave, the makeup, I by God did it in the stages. The first thing I did was I got rid of the weave. Then he worked on the makeup. And then, you know, then it was working on my, my dress attire, right? Because I'm going to tell you, nine times out of ten, you're going to try to fight. You're going to try to fight back. Or why should I have to dress like this? Da, 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 da. This is just the, I'm telling you, I've seen it. If you look at other women's videos, they're going to tell you that you're going to be like, why should I have to do this? And then the Ruach will start ministering to you to tell you why, this, why you need to do certain stuff, right? But like I said, avoid... Um, people that are trying to interpret the Bible from like a religious perspective and not what it actually um, means. Because like I said, when you grow, like there's things you could read it, it's definite, right? Because some, it's like Hebrew is very concrete. So when you read stuff, it's that. But then oh, Abaya will come and then add deeper clarity to what he meant by this that and the third because you'll have people that say the most generic stuff all oh, women ain't supposed to wear pants don't put on what pertains to a man but don't put on what uh, pertains to a woman and women are putting on what pertains to a man because like i said makeup was given to the women by the fallen angels males the sons of god right so that's very you notice that's why women look very masculine and not feminine when they put it on so certain things, that's an example of things will be unlocked in your mind when you get to certain points, right? Or we all used to wear robes. <laughs> we all used to wear robes. So this whole concept, you just, you have to look at what things are from the spiritual lens. And this, this happens when you grow closer to Abaya, he'll start getting very clear right he'll start really telling you like what stuff is right and like i said 
things are very multifaceted. You could read a scripture and think like, you know, this is why you have people saying, yeah, you know, see, Abba Yah, it say right here, for Yah so loved the world, right? And they think he's literally talking about the whole world. When it clearly tells you, because this is why you have to read more than one scripture, that King Yehoshua came for the lost sheep. Who is the lost sheep? He's the shepherd to sheep. Who is the lost sheep? Who are they calling the lost tribes? Right? So when you read stuff, you got to read more than one scripture. When you come into this modesty lifestyle, know that it's, you're going to have thoughts like also thoughts that a lot of women think about. Oh, am I still going to be beautiful? Oh, am I still going to be attractive? The answer is, who do you want to be attractive to? Don't let the enemy try to trap you in that bondage. You, I want to be, listen, I want to be pleasing in the sight of Abaya. And you have to love Abaya more than you love anybody. So, Abaya is where we get everything from. He is the source. So, if you want a righteous man, you're not going to be able to look a certain way and Abaya will hold it from you until you decide to be obedient so if you think if you thinking that you're gonna like a lot of women they don't understand this if you fish and your bait is sensual bait and you want to look a certain way you're gonna get a man that is into infidelity is gonna, he gonna have a bunch of uh, spiritual demons um that's attached to that look that look comes from the kingdom of darkness and so that is what is going to be attracted to that look i know a lot of women they like to argue the point because it was some um ladies under my video why it just you know it doesn't pay to dress promiscuously they wanted to argue the point oh well this that and the third okay well look at their lives in a few years you could even look at some of their lives presently and you tell me is that really profiting them? Is that vanity profiting them? Or you can stay loyal to Abaya and allow him to lead you in the way of dress and the rest of this stuff. And like I said, this is not a religious process, okay? Because you can put on modest attire but still not be modest in your soul. Because the whole concept is fleeing vanity altogether fleeing worldliness altogether working on things in your inner man so that it then starts to reflect outwardly 